on and on and on. Uh, many is about 305,000. Uh, those are the people who leave the workforce. In 2015, one out of every five retirees admitted that they left the workforce earlier than planned due to elder care considerations. Think about that. Now, that's 20% that's of the people retired earlier than planned. That's huge in terms of their financial, um, their financial plans and projections, but it's also huge for corporations because I didn't say they were fired, I said they retired. That means they, these people are typically older, senior executives, it's a huge brain drain on those corporations, and those were not positions that people could you know, put on Monster or Insight, so on and so forth. Those are recruiting firm positions where replacing those employees costs well over $100,000 per. And the crazy thing to me, and I swear I don't understand this, right now, most corporations in America, less than 10% last time I checked, which was a few months ago, have elder care, um, have elder care programs. They are bleeding money, and they have no idea. Because half of caregivers don't tell their, um, their bosses, don't tell the HR departments, companies have no idea, which is crazy. But anyway, here, I'll tell you what, just because time is short, let's make this real, all right? Let's make it real. Uh, had the prison, or had the projector been working, at this point, I would put up a, a slide that is a leprechaun, right? Now, question about the audio lines, what the heck does a leprechaun have to do with elder care, right? Fair? All right, here's how. Um, and this is a true story. You cannot make these sort of things up. Uh, prior to, prior to uh, me handling my business the way that I do now, sorry, um, I started and I used to manage one of the most critically acclaimed home care companies in Northern New Jersey. In that, uh, this lady, Kathy, whose name has been changed, she protected me in this day, but I promise you all the facts are real. Um, Kathy was one of my favorite clients. Here's what happened to her. Um, she was caring for her dad, who was in the middle stages of Alzheimer's. He was starting to get, uh, have hallucinations and so on and so forth. But he always called her at work. She sat in an open air environment near her boss's office, and her boss could always hear a phone ringing, and like they had started to have a bad relationship because, like I said, leaving early, coming in late, long lunches, not getting work done on time, so on and so forth. This particular day, things were exceptionally bad. The phone just kept on, kept on, kept on, every two minutes. Got to come home, got to come home, got to come home, got to come home. Dad called. Finally, a boss walks out of the office, just walks right up to him and goes, look, just go home, go, just go. Go home, you're not getting any work done. Nobody around you's getting any work done. Just go home. So, Kathy's in the car, she's driving home. She's tight, tight. When I get home, mm, tight, mm, you know. Okay. Pulls into the driveway, walks up the front steps, opens the door, she's ready to get from the desk. Mm. Swings the door open, dad's standing there with a pistol in his hand. Oh, Jesus. Right? There, go on. Pistol in hand. But he's all excited. It's like, Kathy, Kathy. See, because I forgot to mention one little thing. When he was calling, he kept going, Kathy, I got a leprechaun trapped in the bathroom. I got a leprechaun trapped in the bathroom. You got to come home. Of course, she pulls that up. It's like, I got work to do, I got boss in my hand, and I can't deal with this today, Dad. But, you know, so she gets home, Dad puts my hand. She's like, okay, situation's changed now. She's stressed, he's like, oh, okay. But he's excited, Kathy, I got him, I got him in the bathroom, he's in the bathroom. She's, and she's about, she's trying to figure out how to get this gun out of Dad's hand. And all of a sudden she hears, help me, help me, help me. For a split second, and this is exactly the way she told me. She was like, she thought, maybe that is. <laughs> I told you, as a caregiver, man, you know, you don't have time to sleep, you know. So, here's what it happened. This was back a little ways, back when we were going into the run up for the 2010 census. And you know how people sometimes come to the door and they knock on the door for, um, you know, to collect the information? Well, a little person had come to the door. Right? Just shoot, I told you, 
can't make this stuff up. Um, and it happened to be from right around the time of the St. Patrick's Day parade and stuff. So dad had been watching TV talking about parade. Look, that one was wonderful. That was like, in dad's mind, he opens the door, there's a little person, it's a leprechaun. Dad gets the bright idea, yo, I'm gonna hold a leprechaun hostage and force him to take us to the pot of gold. It's gonna be good. Cat ain't gonna have to deal with that crazy boss anymore. Touch, you can't make this stuff up. Um, this is elder care. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I would like to tell you that this story is crazy and fanciful and it could never happen, but it does. And there's not a person out there that is immune to it. And by the way, that average caregiver number of just, oh, just under 25 hours a week, that's if mom, dad, grandma is aging gracefully. If you're dealing with someone with like a cognitive issue, like Alzheimer's or something like that, you're over 40 hours a week. Um, you're dealing with like ALS or something like that, over 40 hours a week. If your loved one is over 75, over 40 hours a week. So this stuff is real. Um, but here, because I know my time is short, um, these are the sort of things that happen all the time. But let's talk about what you can do. Um, because like I said, it's absolutely crazy to me that most corporations out there have no idea what's going on. And for the few that do, oddly enough, they honestly believe that they can take the caregiver programs that they have in terms of like child care and slap it on top and just go, oh no, we they're caregivers, so we we'll use these programs. Alright? Um which uh, how many people they have kids? Right? Okay. Um whatever your parenting or your discipline thing is, I'm not trying to judge anybody, but as a father. Let's be honest. I can't force my daughters to do what I want them to do. One way, shape, or form, or another, right? Most of those ways, if you try it with your elderly loved one, would be considered elder abuse, and they will lock you up. Okay? That is one key distinction. And it's crazy to me that companies think that, there's, that there is no distinction. All right? Also, Issues that I deal with with my daughters? Somebody wakes up with a fever, somebody's got a runny nose, so on and so forth. That is far different than what Kathy was dealing with. Her father got a pistol in hand facing um, abduction charges. So companies that are sitting out there talking about, oh no, we got caregiver programs? It's sad and it's crazy. So here's my point. Um, here are a few things, because I, I don't have as much time. I, I see I'm, I'm getting uh, I'm getting this out. Here are a couple of things to do. Number one, um, you got to open the lines of communications with your companies. You got to talk to them. You got to tell them what's going on. Work with them. Number two, most companies don't have any kind of elder care sort of programs. But what you should do is work with your HR departments. Look at what they do have and then help them communicate it better. Because for the few who do have things, they don't communicate it well. Number three, um, work with them in terms of setting up affinity groups. For whatever reason, most caregivers feel alone. This is the single biggest issue that people face. So, um, and, okay, because uh, I'm, I'm getting the look. Yeah, um, yeah take a look. Look. And I'm sorry, I don't have a uh, thing up on the board. But here, how about write this down? Okay. Um, Derek, D D R R I C K. That is, just so you know, the correct way to spell Derek. <laughs> D D R R I C K at Mr. M R Elder E L D E R. Care, C A R E, 101.com. Derek at Mr. Eldercare 101.com. Shoot me questions and stuff because having been on both sides of this equation as a manager and as a worker, I don't want to leave you guys without giving you the right tools. So shoot me a note and I'll send out, a, I'll put something together and send it out for you. Okay? Yes? Okay. Um, 
So, with that, um, do we have any questions? And it doesn't actually have to be work related. We can talk about the money stuff as well. So, okay. And uh, they beat me up every week because she's Medicaid pending. That's uh, something that people need to deal with right away if you got somebody that's approaching that age, or even for yourself, because it can happen, anything can happen to you. I came to an estate planning workshop right here in this building just a couple of months ago, and that's, I learned a lot, and I learned even more from you now because nobody ever talks about the caregiver. Mm -hmm. They talk about the caregiving. And you are exactly right in terms of my production in my own business. If I were not an entrepreneur on my own clock, I don't know how I could do it. Anybody that has a nine to five job, I don't know how you could do it. It's, it's, it's only me and my sister. And thank, thank goodness she's a teacher and gets out early in the day because the stuff that you have got to do, the paperwork that you've got to pull together, it is so stressful. And there are programs, I know Beth Israel has a program, um, a caregiver's program. I don't even have time to go to it. So I just wanted to tell you thank you because nobody talks about the caregiver, or at least I haven't had that experience. But we also need to um, talk, if you could talk about the importance of getting but I want to the make sure I power of before it's too late. Okay, actually uh, you touched on a few different things. And um, I'm not really big on self-promotion. Um, 